EndNote really comes into its own when you're working with it with Microsoft Word. So this video is going to look at inserting references, it's going to look at editing in-text citations because there's a few changes you can make to them and also how to easily delete them and it's going to look briefly at converting citations to some of the other options that you have such as plain text. So the first thing we're going to look at is simply inserting a reference into your document. So I've got a document here and it's all in Latin because it doesn't actually matter what it says. And we're going to put some references into it. The first thing I need to do is just put my insert point where I want the reference to appear. I'm putting it here in the third line. And then I'm going to go to the EndNote ribbon. This will automatically be in Word if you've got EndNote installed on your machine. It's picking up already the Harvard Hull style from the EndNote program, but if for any reason that isn't showing the style you want, you can select from the list here as well. And you'll notice the very first button on the toolbar is Insert Citation. If I click on the top part of that button, it will just automatically open the Insert Citation dialog box. If I click on the bottom part of it, I'll get a few other options. I'm just going to click Insert Citation. This opens a dialog box where I can search for a particular citation and I can search for it using many different criteria. So the last search I did was obviously for an author called Daily. I could instead search for an author called Bowen that I know is in my library. Alternatively, I could go for something to do with a theme. So I could put a word in and it would bring me up appropriate references for that. I'm happy to insert the Bowen reference here and I can just go and click insert. And that puts the citation into my document in the default format. And you can see automatically at the bottom of the document it started to build up my reference list. If I wanted to put in a citation where only the date needed to be in brackets, for example if I was saying Bowen suggested something, then there's one other little step. Again, I can go to Insert Citation. This time I'll choose the next one down. Instead of clicking on the Insert button here, I can go to the drop down list alongside it and choose Insert and Display as Author and Year in brackets. You can see the other options there too. And there you can see it's put it in that other format. Don't worry if you forget to choose that format when you insert it because you can always edit it after it's in too just by right clicking on the citation, going down to edit citations and you can see you can swap between the different formats here. Another way of inserting a citation is to already have it selected in EndNote. So if I just switch back to my library, I can then select a specific reference or more than one if I wish to put them all in at the same point and then switch back to Word. Put the insert point where I want it and then I'm going to the insert citation button but this time I'm clicking on the bottom part of it and choosing insert selected citations and that puts it into the document. If you want to add multiple citations at the same point just put your insert point following an existing citation. Go to your insert citation option, find the citation you want. And insert it and you'll see EndNote automatically includes the correct punctuation. This is also the case if it's the same author at different years it will adjust the punctuation accordingly. There are a few other things that we can do to edit the citations and we'll look at those next. The most common form of edit you might need to make to a citation is to add page numbers for if you've used a direct quotation or for if your discipline needs it anyway. To add a page number simply right click on the citation 
and choose Edit Citations from the bottom of the menu and then More from the bottom of the submenu. This opens the Edit and Manage Citations dialog box and there's an option for Pages at the bottom of this box where you can just put in the number. You could also include a page range here. Click OK. The citations will update and you can see that has now got the page number included. If you want to add any text at all within the brackets of your citations, you can't just click in and type. It will let you initially, for example, if I clicked in front of this citation and put C also, but it will then disappear as it updates. Instead, you need to add this within that Edit Citation option. So again, right-click, Edit Citations and More. Make sure you have the appropriate reference selected for the beginning or end of any multiple citations. This is correct. And then I can put my C also in here, remembering to put the space at the end of it. And you can see that's included there. It's the same for a suffix. I put my space and then put my suffix in there. Now we'll look at deleting citations. If you want to delete citations, it's slightly different whether you've got an individual citation or a group of citations. For example, for the Bowen citation that I put in to begin with, I can easily select that and delete it, and it stays deleted and it's gone from the reference list. But if I try and do that, say, with the Brunner reference here in the middle of my multiple citations, it keeps coming back as it's updating. For this, again, you need to right-click, Edit Citation and More, and this time I select the reference in the list at the top, go to Edit Reference on the right hand side and choose Remove Citation. That will keep it deleted. And finally, we'll look at converting citations. You may not always need to convert citations, but it's useful to know how to do it. The citations in your document are fields. You can change this so that the document becomes plain text. That is, it's as if you'd type them all in manually. Occasionally, this is asked for. Make sure your document is saved before you do this, and then go to the Convert Citations and Bibliography option on the EndNote ribbon. There's an option to convert to plain text. As you can see, you'll get a message to tell you that this is going to create a new copy of the document without the EndNote markers in it, and you'll keep the document with the EndNote markers in. Be aware that if you've saved this on a cloud drive, you won't get this option, so create a backup copy first yourself. So it's now opened a brand new document called Document 3, and if I select over the text, you'll see those markers have disappeared. My original document is still here with the markers in. Sometimes you might find a document that is showing rather strange citations. These are unformatted citations, and they look like this. These are the way that EndNote stores citations when no output style is applied. Don't worry, it hasn't broken. All you need to do to get rid of these is update the citations and bibliography and it will reformat them as dictated by your style.